Where were you guys at? Um, just outside of Fallujah, but we were operating this little town called Karma. Okay. <laughs> um, and it was good, but um, a lot of palm groves, a lot of a lot of nasty shit out there. We just we were not trained to do. So kind of come into play later about our inexperience. Um, but one night we we do an offset infill. We're uh, we're patrolling a target and we get about 200 meters out and you could see the entire posture shift of everybody in that assault force. Everybody switched. You could smell it. Like this is a fucking ambush. <laughs> like it just is. Walking down the road, the houses we were walking past, like you just, you were waiting. It was a breath hold the entire way. Um, and I say that because people started doing things they've never done before. The pace they were moving, we've never moved at that pace before. Um, when we would, um, when we would do patrolling and training, like there's a lackadaisical patrol and there's a patrol to contact. Like we're going to get hit right now. Everybody was in patrol to contact mode. Like it's happening right now. No You're waiting shit. for a trade at to throw RD Sims and kick the whole thing off. Like it was, it's right there. And I remember the last 50 feet sprinting to the building. They had a big overhang and we've been getting ISR updates. There's uh, multiple guys on a roof. I'm like, okay. So as we patrol up, there's a bunch of guys in the courtyard of this, and it's a, uh, it's an Iranian influence cell that we're kind of going after now, and they fight completely different. Um, we lock down some guys on these, um, on these sleepers on the courtyard, and we, we maneuver up, um, made silent entry. We go in, we're doing our whole clearance, and I bolt straight for the stairs. Um, it's a huge open room. Um, I don't know how to describe it. Um, just a huge open room with little offshoot bedrooms. Made no sense to be a house. It was like a structure. Um, and they had a, a two tier landing that came up and banked, and then it basically just opened into the roof. Just a, an opening in the middle of the roof, and you walked up and you're surrounded 360, 720 by the roof. <sighs> Stacked up the train and got right there, right at the last little breach of it. So I'm about this high underneath it. And uh, I stood up and threw on my laser, and there was a dude sprinting at me at full blast with a pistol in his hand and unloaded six shots at me. No shit. Yeah, so he unloaded, um, I unloaded on him, got off three rounds in a bolt lock. So, dropped to my knees and we called Xville, um, ran around the back, everybody got their guns um, up and running and grenades started coming off the roof. Um, so in rally, what had happened is... So hold on, did you eliminate the threat? Yep. He's dead. Mm -hmm. Did he, he didn't hit you. He did. He did hit you. He hit me in the in the chest plate in uh, one of the magazines. So pistol caliber, like 45, dead center. Um, I mean, dead center. <laughs> um, so he snacked me there, which I don't know how he did it with a downward angle because that was presented. So blind luck, snacked me in the plates were good. I don't know where the other five went. I don't know how they didn't hit anybody else. Um, but I mean, he was probably within six feet. I mean, he was there. What you didn't realize um, in the ISR update we did not get is he was standing at the base of the stairs waiting. They never told us that. He's standing there waiting for us to come up and there is a, another shooter in a sandbag position with a belt fed, a PK, aimed at the top of the stairs and he's pulled off a suicide vest and laid it at the base of the stairs and pulled back a command wire and you can see him. He's holding it. He's waiting to clack it off. And we never know. So if I would have made entry, if I shot that dude and would have continued to go, that guy would have cut me in half. So just blind luck that I got bolt lock and I forced to retreat. Um, so we start trading grenades on the roof back and forth. A um, bunch of different maneuver elements are happening. We've got three or four guys that are fragged from the grenades, our chief included, um, like a corpsman, our turp, our JTAC. So a bunch of guys, not bad, but bad enough. I mean, it's your first time being wounded, like, um, Takes you by surprise. Like your wounded eagle, it's like, oh no. Like how bad? You instantly think the worst. Um, but we had to win the fight. So yeah. we're trading grenades on the roof, we're doing that whole thing. And um, one of the guys wanted to send a one of the mams from the courtyard. He grabs him, terp, perfect English. Um, he's like, I know who that is. Oh yeah? And he's like, it's my cousin. I'm like. Terp tells him again, like, send that dude up there and tell him to tell his cousin to come down here. Like, we don't know who's up there. Um, the slant was really weird that night with how many women and kids were supposed to be there. It was bad intel. It was kind of just 
hodgepodge and we sent that dude back up there and he's calling out to his cousin you know whatever he's saying whatever he's saying and he got halfway up the stairs and poked his head up and that dude let it go whoa 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 whoa, whoa. killed his own cousin and here we go more grenades are coming off the roof um, so the whole force now, we're basically locked down inside of this building and grenades are coming off. We don't know how many dudes are on the roof. And now there's multiple maneuver elements of bad guys in and around the city. We have to fall back now. Um, we got a super badass new guy that posted up the saw. Basically, like, everybody wants that opportunity. Rock the front of this building so we can all run underneath it. That dude stepped out and just wah, 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 sent it. We all ran back and um, we got our first fire mission in, like a... Uh, a first like no shit fire mission. Damn. So um, that was cool. I didn't know um, I've been hit yet. You didn't know you've been hit yet. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. We uh, I kept having a bolt lock, so I'd fire three rounds, bolt lock. I dumped out a mag, grabbed a new one, and when I did, it cut my fingers. So where the round hit it, it had blown out the back of it like a big spider web. So when I grabbed it, it filleted my hands open. So I dropped the mag, grabbed a new one. Got the gun back up and running, and for whatever reason, I grabbed it off the ground and put it in my back pocket. Like, I don't know why I did it. I just, I did it. Um, so when we got back on the helo, we're flying out after that whole thing. Um, we got all the medevac guys out. They were fine, minimal injuries, nothing crazy. Um, we're flying back on the helo, and I'm sitting next to, uh, to Jay Redmond. And I held up the mag, and I'm looking, and I'm trying to focus it with my nods back and forth, and I, I don't know what it is. Like... It never, it never even entered my conscious thought that I took it around there. Damn. I didn't know what it was. Put it back in my pocket and we get back to the ready room and we're going in for the debrief. And I dropped my gear and I looked at it and it's still in disbelief. I'm like, what the fuck is that? And I hand it to one of the other guys and he's like, that's a fucking bullet, dude. Oh, sh that is a bullet. That is a bullet. Dead center. Um, but it was weird when you look at the bullet and the angle it came into, um, we did a lot of breaching back then. We landed a lot. Um, I used to run around with the charges capped in. And I had them all capped in. And I had uh, my primary charges in a pouch right there. And it nicked the edge of the pouch where the caps were exposed to. So obviously if it would have hit that blasting cap, that would have been a whole. Damn. That would have been a, been a bad day. So it's for like, the audience, just real quick, I'm just going to interrupt. Uh, when he's talking about the caps being in, exposed. Basically a breaching charge is a bomb, you know, that they use to blow a door, blow a hole in the wall, blow whatever up. And uh, the blasting caps are uh, extremely sensitive. So if that would have hit one of those, uh, it would have been end of the road for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were running on big charges and we blew everything. Um, we blew everything. <laughs> that was the SOP back then. If you, could, uh, if you could blow it, you blew it. So you didn't even fucking feel Mm -mm. You didn't even feel the fact that you got fucking pegged by a 45 in the chest plate. So thinking back on it, um, the guys behind me said they saw me like, take a reflex. I didn't feel it. And the next morning um, when I stood up and I arched back, it felt like I did too many sit-ups, like sore in the sternum, um, kind of hard to take a full breath, but nothing like what you'd imagine. Like I imagine I would have known instantly like, oh my God, I didn't. The adrenaline was so high that... That's kind of what we use for like a training analogy now. Like when that adrenaline dumps, you won't know. Yeah. You won't know. Like in a proximity, a gunfight that is that close where you see muscle flash and you feel it. It's very different. It's not being shot at from 300 meters. It's not a, it's not a hitting the wall. It's inside of six feet. It's a very different experience. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. I've never been shot. I don't know, you know what that feels like, but I always imagined it would uh, knock you on your fucking ass. Yeah, I mean, luckily it didn't. Yeah, yeah. no shit.